Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. What's good, man? What's going on? Finally getting some warmer weather. Yes, finally. Now, will it stay that way? That's the question. Eh, This is Kansas, probably not. That's true. I don't know how it was for you on Saturday, but we had it snowed for five minutes. I literally watched it snow outside. It was just flurries and it was random, but I was mad. And then later on in the day, it got close to 60. So I think it's mostly, well, see, no, Saturday was just cold here. It was just cool. Um, you know, like 58 to 62, somewhere in that arena with a wind. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, three of my six grandchildren had, had soccer games. So I, I was going from game to game and, you know, freezing my butt off out there. Yeah, one of these days, I'm going to be 72 and sunny the whole day and no wind. Let me stress that. I don't mind the wind as long as it's not like 50 miles an hour. Well, try being a runner. <laughs> <laughs> Going out, it's okay. Coming back, not so much. I, I, I can see that. Yeah. Um, It's TCT, baby. That would be... True crime, true, Thursday. true crime Thursday, and we got a good one for everybody today, man. Because um, you tipped me off to this guy briefly last week when we were talking, mm-hmm. did some digging, and I learned quite a few things. Now, here, first off the bat, we're, we're talking about uh, the uh, choke and stroke killer, and if that doesn't sound familiar to a lot of you. You're in the same boat as me. Um, Sam Little. And when you mentioned Sam Little last week, I'm like, who? Mm-hmm. And you come to find out that this man was the most prolific killer in U.S. history. And when we talk about these guys, you think John Wayne Gacy, you think Ted Bundy, you think um, Son of Sam, you know, it, if I had to list 10 of them, Sam Little wouldn't have been on that list because it wasn't in my mind. And um, Pro- Prolific as in how many victims? Yes. Yes. His, his crimes just weren't sensationalized like those other ones that you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as we know, he didn't eat them like Dahmer. Uh, he wasn't a smooth talker like uh, Bundy, um, but uh, he this cat was different. We'll just put it that way. He was very different, and I'm gonna go over some facts before we get into it. All right, and this part blew my mind. Okay, yeah, he started reading about crime at a young age and he fantasized about uh he had sexual fantasies about strangling women as a child starting when he saw his kindergarten teacher touch her neck okay yeah he had he had a a fetish for necks yeah I, i i gathered that when choke and stroke killer came up um but well that could be a whole lot of things <laughs> yeah that, that's true <laughs> um long story short he did end up doing four life sentences without the uh, possibility of parole and he had 60 confirmed victims 90 through 93 excuse me claimed uh, uh and uh if you caught us last week big show told us that uh his span of crimes were from 1970 until two, 2005. Dude was active for a quarter century. So that's where we get that prolific part in there. Um, it, it just boggles my mind that somebody can do that and do that for so long. Um, yes and no. So, so for, for that, you have to break down his victims. You know, they were mostly prostitutes, Mm -hmm. um, overlooked, 
in True. in a lot of aspects when it comes to law enforcement, especially 70s, 80s, and 90s. You know, late 80s, early 90s, you're talking about the crack epidemic. So that's where, you know, most of the uh, attention was for law enforcement and, and the judicial system. So I, I think that's how he was able to um, be out there and, and do what he did for so long. Plus, he did it all over the freaking country. He didn't. Yes. He wasn't stuck in one city. Yeah, he, I think it would be quicker to name the states that he did not have a kill in versus right? the states that he did. I mean, that's how that's how many um, that that he has you know claimed to have done. Yeah, admitted um, to doing, I guess. Now. And, and we touched on this too, you know, fast forwarding to, you know, after the incarceration, uh, the uh, California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation Sources indicate no cause of death, although Little suffered from diabetes and heart problems and other conditions. So it's ironic that, you know, if that was the case, his own body took him out after what he well, did. Wasn't he like 80 when he got convicted? Yeah, that that's the other thing, because yeah. you know it was two thousand and what uh, five, two thousand and five. Yeah, I think. It, it, no, no, no. It was like two thousand. Yeah, that's when he stopped, right? Yeah, that's when that he was stopped. His last kill because he went from seventy until two thousand and five. So we know that he was killing for twenty five years, which is wild in and of itself. Um, I just believe that, and, and I know, like you said. It's easy to fly under the radar, so it can be done. Not that I would advise anybody to try that at home, but you well, have to I have would, a sick, sick mind. Well, I would that. say it, it it can't be done now. There, There's no way that it could happen now. Everybody has a cell phone. Everybody has a camera. You, you, you're not going to last 93 unless you're a mass murderer and you kill 93 people all at once. Good point. It, you know, in, in my humble opinion, I, I don't think, you know, with the way that everybody the raised the glass and drink the Kool-Aid <laughs> forensic science has come so far. Um, But, you know, this guy, you know, like if you. You know, I this is kind of like I like to watch true crime stuff and and things about that. I'm kind of a junkie when it comes to that. His story isn't really any different than Jeffrey Dahmer's, yeah, or John Wayne Gacy's, or uh, Ted Bundy, or anybody else that's out there. There were times that he got pulled over by the police, and he talked his way out of it. He had a dead body in the back seat. He had just finished killing a girl and a police pulled up behind him. He got out, zipped up his pants. She was naked in the back seat. He told the police officer she was drunk. They let him go. Yeah, that man, that is crazy. Crazy. And it also helped. He had two, um, what's wrong? Helpers, I guess you would say. He had an older woman that he lived with that they, uh, he would rob stuff. She would fence it. So he was actually accused, I want to say in the early 80s, maybe middle 80s, huh? almost maybe begin late 80s, somewhere in that arena. And she was a witness and she was witness for him. And her testimony actually got him off to where he was found not guilty of these, a few of the strangulations. Yeah, but did she know that he was doing it or? Yes, she okay. actually, she actually, like one of the guys, I, I happened to see a documentary a few weeks ago and there was a young kid that ran with him and he had been out all night. Little has been out all night and he's come back and the car smells like shit, you know, just really bad. Mm -hmm. The old woman went out there and cleaned it up. And it really was human feces and blood because as he strangled the woman, she defecated on herself. Yeah. He cleaned all that up and 
so she knew what he was doing. Um, but she was, you know, she was a rock hard criminal as well. And then this young man that was hanging with them uh, was supposed at that particular trial was supposed to uh, testify against Sam Little and he disappeared and never made the trial was never found convenient yes now if you go by you know the early age stuff you know how does this start off for you know somebody to do things like this yes his his mom i believe was a prostitute so i'm sure at an early age he probably seen things experienced things that already for lack of a better word here warped his mind so he didn't start off on the best of conditions and uh i believe he had bad grades in school and did he drop out do you remember or just um that i'm not i'm not sure I do know that he was convicted of burglary in Omaha, Nebraska, and he was sent to an institution for juvenile offenders. Uh, and instead of coming out rehabilitated, he picked up his old habits and became a professional criminal at that point. And never stayed in one place too long. Yeah. And, and you touched on that a few minutes ago, which, you know, is why he was able to get away with everything. Uh, you know, now... Nowadays, there is a national database, so it doesn't matter what state you're in. You know, your past is going to follow you wherever you go. But back in the 70s and 80s, it wasn't so. So he had that going for him. Um, and, and he was arrested countless times everywhere he went. So it wasn't like he just got off one or two times. He had been arrested several times. And he'd been arrested all across the country by his mid thirties. And that's his thirties. Yeah, just... And he, if he doesn't get caught and, and for, for the serial killings until his late seventies, early eighties, I mean, he, he's got to be one of the smoothest talkers in history to get out of this stuff. He had to have a genius level mind to work stuff oh. out. I I would say definitely, especially with his his talent for the drawings. Yeah, you he... want you want to mention that again? I know you talked about it last week, but so, for people that are listening to this, this tripped me out. So here's okay. So here's basically the thing. So he was convicted um, for I think two or three um, of the strangulations in Los Angeles mm -hmm. when he returned eighty. And he was very defiant at the at the sentencing, saying that you know that he was convicted, you know, over lies and false your accusations and things like that. And as he was wheeled out of the courtroom, you know, he threw his hand up like he just won something, you know, very defiant, very arrogant. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, he got sentenced to I don't know multi life sentences. Obviously, he's eighty; he's never get, he was never getting out, but. That being said, there was an old case in the state of Texas that had been a cold case forever, and a young detective lady uh, asked if she could open it back up and look into it. You know, and obviously by this time in 2005, there's more stuff in a database where she can match things and and what's the what's the word I'm looking for? Like the the things that match, like um, talking about APHIS. And no, 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 no. Like, uh, well, they, they call it something in the criminal world, but it's like the, the modus operandi is the same oh, kind okay. of thing, you know. Um, so the lot of qu or, uh, similarities in other cases that were unsolved. Well, there's a Texas Ranger that has spoken with and, and actually uh, got a lot of prolific murderers to confess uh, their crimes. And so he was asked if he would fly to Los Angeles, California and talk to this cat. At first, you know, it, I think it lasted like three or four weeks, but at, uh, at first it was just, you know, they found out that, you know, he hates LA 
uh, police department. He loves peanut M&Ms. So they had all this stuff that they brought and played off of him and became his friend and then started talking about this one case in Texas. And uh, at first he was very defiant and like, I, you know, you're trying to convict me of this, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, no, we're just, it's similar. We just want to know what your thoughts are and come to find out he was the killer of this lady in Texas. So they were able to extradite him to Texas to go on trial for this particular murder. He was okay with that. He was given a bunch of art supplies. I mean, he was being catered to for this right. whole year. And then basically that opened up the floodgates of him letting them know from his beginning of his crime spree to the end where he killed these people, how he killed these ladies. He knew most of their names. And again, he's 80 years old. So he started his attack. One of the, one of the, um, one of the uh, 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 guards in the L.A. jail seen that he had all these pictures on his wall and they were like pictures of like celebrities and stuff, but they were very accurate. And, you know, the police department, the, the Texas Rangers started honing in on that and gave him all new art supplies. And he agreed that he could, you know, um, draw these ladies and like there were pictures of these women in real life and they hold them up to these pictures that he drew and it's like damn near identical i mean it's just yeah. it's really weird now the fbi is continuing to use some of those pictures to resolve some of the cold cases and i believe they did resolve one with one of those pictures in akron ohio to uh, a woman that he did uh kill so Hey, you're right. I mean, the pictures he drew and the pictures that uh, of of these women spot on accurate. Um, I mean, it, just imagine being 80 years old and drawing a picture of a woman you killed in Charleston, South Carolina in 1977. Um, you know, like that, I, I wasn't kidding when I I'm said just, genius level of yes. I mean, you flip the coin at an early age, go, go a different route. He could have really done something with his life. Oh yeah. He, he, he had that kind of talent, but all it takes yes. is one wrong turn and it turns him into a monster and, and we're going the other way now. So it, it just goes to show you at the drop of a dime, any one of us could be anything different than what we are. And Choices, story, obviously. Yeah, choices. But his story goes to show you that not only could he do this distasteful stuff, this heinous crimes, dude not only got away with it, he was arrogant, like you said. He, you know, I imagine after that fourth or fifth kill, he probably figured they're not going to get me. I'm, I'm way too good for this. So that's where that arrogance comes in. I think that's exactly how I thought. And then when he was found not guilty at the first trial, when he was young, he was like, Psh, this is a piece of cake. And it's not got even this. just the trial. You got a dead body in the back and you get out of it. Then what does that do for your mind? You True. already believe I mean, but... that you're doing something right. And now you believe that you can get away with it. I mean, oh, but man. Jeffrey Dahmer did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, lots you know, of them did. So, you know, lots of them did. You know, like I, I, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer had cut up pieces of bodies in his back seat in a trash bag and, and, you know, talked to police out of that. And then, you know, when that boy that he had. Yeah. The one that or whatever. Up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, he was able to get the police to look the other way at that as well. Yeah, I mean, like I said, this guy had to, I mean, even if you look, listen to his, some of his jailhouse interviews, and I don't know, you probably able to put a couple clips up on the video, um, but it's, he's very arrogant and he, but he, he's very um, personable, you know what yeah. I mean? 
like you could sit down and have a conversation with him. And if you didn't know who he was or what he did, you'd probably enjoy the conversation. Yeah. He actually, I mean, he actually reminds me of one of my uncles that went to prison. <laughs> different Very crimes altogether. But you remember several months back, we talked about, I forget Roy's last name, but he was the coach of the fake school team. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he was that kind of uh, talker. Yeah. 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 He, he could talk his way out of anything or he could talk his way into anything. BS high. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it, it was crazy. Um. As a now, matter of fact, uh, before we continue, I just want to let everybody know in the description of this video, I'm going to link a YouTube video. It's about an hour long, but it, it is the documentary here that talks about Sam Little, what we're discussing here. So you can excellent. dive more into it and um, listen to it as well. I mean, because we're just scraping the surface of yeah. this cat. I mean, this it's very interesting. If if you are into this type of thing, um, you know, learning about the criminal mind. Yeah, I mean, that that's that's what piqued my interest last week when you were talking about him. Just to be able to, you know, work his way through the system, get around things, and not just do it once or twice, but to do it at least 93 times. For over 25 years, we're talking about a quarter of a century of killing people, a quarter of a century. And, and, and you know, the most he did was about three years time altogether for little bitty ticky tack stuff in his younger mm -hmm. years. So um, we already talk about how jacked up your mind has to be just to start to do something like this but each time you get away with it you get that false sense of security or that arrogance in his case uh that you can do it you're supposed to do it and you can get away with it and that is the mind of a serial killer um that's the common denominator i believe with most serial killers either they feel tortured and they have to do it or they want to do it and, and, and they get off on it. it. It's really weird. You know, you had mentioned that he was named the choke and stroke killer. I, that's the first I ever heard it till you said it. I really? happen to be, yeah, I happen to be looking at his Wikipedia page and I see it on there. So yeah, uh, that, that, that threw me off. Cause like, yeah, not really the title that I'd want, but... Right? Uh, so, yeah, he was confirmed 60. Claimed 93. And his killing span is from 1970 to 2012. Was it 2012 or 20, 20, 2005? 2005 confirmed... 2012 possible because of all the other open cases that they had that he okay. said he's done that they haven't been able to uh, to do it well actually they're saying span of crimes confirmed 1970 to 2005 possible from 1960 to 2012 because of his confessions of these ladies that and that you know he is actually uh Yeah, um drew out. And he was he was arrested on September 5th of 2012. That's right, cuz he only spent 8 years locked up. That's all the time yeah. he did for minimum yeah, 93 murders, 8 years. He he died in 2020, yep. Yeah. It, it just, you know, not not only is it prolific with his amount, but, you know, and I don't, I'm not trying to turn this into a racial thing, but he's a black dude. You don't hear about black serial killers. Very true. You know, that's a crazy white guy. Normally how it is, you know, <laughs> which, which also makes this particular case and, and, and person, uh, 
uh, more of an interesting fact because it's kind of an oddity. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, especially when you consider that he was doing this all over the country. So yes. wherever he went, he was able to turn it on. Yes. 16 total states is what he's been accused of 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 these crimes that he's com that he's committed so he uh, within a third of the country mm -hmm. man and you uh, know there's only one other killer that i know of that that has claimed to kill more and that's richard kuklinski the ice man he was only convicted of five and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of, you know, that he boasted his numbers, you know, but he's the only other guy that has, that I, that I've heard about in this whole genre that that's had multiple like that besides Gacy that had what 30 something yeah. underneath his house. Now, let me ask you something because you, you cause you Iceman said he's like 200 is what he's claiming. You, you brought up something there with that. Mm -hmm. Do you think that little, um, boasted any of his numbers? You know, if he didn't have the drawing, I would say possibly. But the fact that he that they were able to connect a lot of them to these drawings, and then he has more that they haven't connected yet, I would say probably not. And the fact that he was able to say when he did it, how he did it, where he buried the body, that they went back and recovered some of these bones and stuff that, you know, that were decades old. Mm. Yes, Samuel Little was a sick man. Or indeed. a lot of it was like, okay, I left this girl in this particular um because that's what they were talking about. This one, this this one lady or one victim um that was found and she was in a field, he covered her with tires, and they wanted to convict him of it, and they were like, We think he's lying. We need something that only the killer would know that you couldn't research this particular person and figure it out. Not that mm -hmm. he had any internet access or anything, but he, he talked about a, a pipe that stuck out of the building that in all the crime photos, they didn't know what he was talking about. They're like, there's no freaking pipe here. But as they researched through this particular case file, there was one roll of undeveloped film. Mm. They developed they developed it, and sure enough, there happened to be a picture of this pipe that he was describing. And then that's how they knew that, yep, we believe him, because nobody else would know that. Yeah, it's also amazing to me that someone would confess to something, and the system, and we all know the system is flawed, no, nah, we're not going to believe you until we have proof that you did it. Well, they wanted to convict him. Yeah. Hey, a confession so that was to me is conviction enough. Oh, no. Unfortunately, it's not in the judicial system. I know. That's why I'm not judge, jury, or executioner. I would be thinning out the herd. Yeah, most <laughs> definitely. I'd have an express line. Right? Everybody that wants the chair, line on up. I'm frying them every five minutes. You know, and I'm just, you know, I'm thankful to, you know, in this day and age. I mean, obviously the predators change their their predatory ways, but I'm thankful that my kids aren't growing up in the 60s and 70s, you know. Yeah. Where it was a lot easier. Hitchhiking was a thing, you know. Yeah. Um wasn't frowned upon that type of deal. Um so yeah, back back in the day, you could whether you tried to or not, you could put yourself in yeah, in harm's way easily. Position. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, easily harm's way, and not yeah. even realize it. Like there's another killer, Ed Kemper. Uh, he's known as the uh, what was he called? The sorority, uh, sorority killer or whatever. But he he killed like three or four hitchhikers, and then he killed his mom. But uh, he like practice like he picked up and dropped off like he said over 100 150 girls 
and talk to them to see how to get in to where make him comfortable, blah, blah, blah. He practiced it before he actually wow. executed it. Wow. And I just wonder... think of all those girls that he did not kill, how lucky they are. Yeah, because... Because any time he could have decided this was it, I'm going to do it now. Damn. Um, <clears throat> and you were right. Uh, times times are different now. I mean, that doesn't make it any safer. But with technology and the things that we have around us, you are right. It puts us in a better light to be safer. Um, yeah, just the predators are more or have to be predators in a different way. I mean, they have yeah. to attack from a different angle. They can't just blatantly be out there because, uh, you know, like I said, there's always, there's always somebody watching this. You know, how many people on your block have the ring doorbell? You know right. what I mean? Just use that as an example. So, I mean, you may not even think about it. You're, you know, I'm going to hurt somebody 10 houses down from you, but I walk past your house five minutes before this accident or, you know, whatever occurred. And then I walked back, obviously they're going to look for me because, you know, well, why were you there at this time frame? Blah, blah, blah. You know, so that's, that's how I think that it's not, it wouldn't be you, as easy you pick to somebody do. somebody up from said location. Uh, if it's around businesses, somebody's got a camera pointed oh, toward yeah. the parking lot. Somebody's mm -hmm. got a camera pointed toward the back door. So, um, yeah. I mean, even driving past a gas station, you know, your vehicle was spotted, you know, that type of thing. Traffic cams. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's the portion of the show where we deter anybody who's trying to believe that they can do this shit. You know, we and, we, and we let's bring be this honest. up out of the fascination of it and to pick their brains to see what they were thinking. Go ahead. And let's be honest. Let's be honest. The only serial killer that's ever gotten away with anything is the Zodiac killer. He was never found. Everybody else, their stuff they did in the dark has come to light. Even if it's 60 years after their first whatever, mm -hmm. it's come to light. So another deterrent is <laughs> just don't do it because you're not going to get away with it, period. And What's if you old? do get away with it here on the planet Earth, you won't get away with it in the next life. Right? Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. There are no water breaks in hell. <laughs> so I've been told. Amen. And we don't want to find out. Hell no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note, we're going to get out of here. Uh, appreciate your comments. Let us know what you think about Sam Little and um, check out the uh, links that I have in here and, and learn a lot more about him because Big Show was right. We just scratched the surface and there's so much more. And, you know, not only do I, you know, delve into the mind of a serial killer on here, it makes me look at everybody in a different light. Yes. Because, you know, that person that uh, you see at work every day that's the really smooth talker. Now you like looking at him with the shifty side eye, like, what do you do in your spare time? Uh, yes. Not that I'm saying that any of the people I work with are bad, but hey, you never can. But you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, show, go ahead and take us out of here. Thanks for uh, stopping by this week. We appreciate you. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, keep us employed. We definitely appreciate that. And, uh, you know. Hug your loved ones. Tomorrow's not promise. You might run into a sand little. Love you guys. See you next week. You guys take care.